Hey guys, welcome back to Inclex Session. We are on part 10 and we will be discussing psychological type questions for your Inclex exam and also for the season nurses who don't know a whole lot about psych and want to brush up on it. These are some good questions to know. Um, a little bit about me. My background is mainly discussed in part two, three, and four, so I will not bore you with all the details, but I have been a nurse for over 20 years. I also have a master's degree in nurse education, so I'm a professor as well. Okay, guys, let's just jump right into the questions. Question number one, which assessment finding in a seven-year-old child should a nurse prioritize when suspecting ADHD? A, above average school performance, B, consistent inability to sit still, C, frequent headaches, or D, preference for solitary play. If you chose B, consistent inability to sit still, you are correct. ADHD is often characterized by symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. The consistent inability to sit still is a hallmark sign of hyperactivity, a common feature in children with ADHD. Question two, a 10 year old child with ADHD is prescribed Ritalin. What is an essential nursing consideration when administering this medication? A, administer it with meals. B, Avoid giving it in the evening. C, monitor for hypotension. Or D, administer on an empty stomach. If you answered B, avoid giving it in the evening, you are correct. Ritalin is a stimulant medication that can interfere with sleep when taken in the evening. Therefore, it should be administered in the morning to minimize the risk of insomnia. Question number three, during a patient education session on ADHD management, a parent asks about non-pharmacological interventions. Which response by the nurse is accurate? A, high sugar diets can help children with ADHD focus better. B, structured routines and consistent expectations can be helpful. C, Limit all physical activities to prevent overstimulation. Or D, ADHD is slowly treated with medications. No other interventions are effective. If you answered B, structured routines and consistent expectations can be helpful, you are correct. Now remember guys that non-pharmacological interventions including the maintaining structured routines and setting clear expectations are essential in managing ADHD symptoms. So these strategies can be helpful with children with ADHD to better manage their daily lives. Question four, a patient with bipolar disorder is in the manic phase. Which nursing intervention should the nurse prioritize? Is it A, encouraging the patient to rest and relax? B, administering a sedative medication as ordered? C, providing positive reinforcement for their energy? Or D, suggesting cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT? If you answered B, administering a sedative medication as ordered, you are correct. Remember guys that during the manic phase of bipolar disorder, sedative medications may be necessary to help the patient manage excessive energy, agitation, and impulsive behavior. Question five. A patient with schizophrenia is experiencing auditory hallucinations. What should the nurse's initial response be? A, reassure the patient that the voices aren't real. B, ask the patient what the voices are saying. C, administer antipsychotic medications as prescribed. D, 
encourage the patient to ignore the voices. If you answered C, administer antipsychotic medications as prescribed, you are correct. In the presence of hallucination, remember that particularly in schizophrenia, the priority is to administer the antipsychotic medications to just alleviate the symptoms. There's no point in getting into a back and forth with a patient who's hearing hallucinations that you can't hear. You'll never get anywhere with that. So yeah, don't question the patient about what they're hearing. Question six, a patient with severe depression is prescribed SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. What should the nurse monitor for during the early stages of the SSRI therapy? Is it A, elevated blood pressure? B, increased suicidal ideation? C, improved mood and energy? D, weight gain. If you answered B, increased suicidal ideation, you are correct. SSRI therapy can initially increase the risk of suicidal ideation, especially in young adults. So always closely monitor during this crucial time. Question seven. A patient with depression has been non-compliant with medication and therapy. What nursing intervention is appropriate? Is it A, encourage the patient to accept their lack of motivation? B, discuss the importance of adhering to treatment. C, decrease the frequency of follow-up appointments. D, suggest alternative treatment options. If you answered B, discuss the importance of adhering to treatment, you are correct. Encouraging the patient to understand the importance of adhering to treatment is crucial in managing depression. It is also important to work collaboratively with the patient to improve their compliance with their medications. So I hope you guys did well on those questions. Some frequent questions you may see on the NCLEX. If you didn't, feel free to send me an email at admin at skillstacks.org. And if there's any additional questions you have, please feel free to leave me those questions and I will respond back within 24 to 48 hours with some answers. And if you need actual tutoring one-on-one -on -one or you prefer a group session, let me know that as well. And I will send some information about our tutoring services that Skill Snacks offers. I hope you did well, guys. If you didn't, just brush up on some of your notes and um, review. Okay, guys, have a great day and stay tuned again for more InClock sessions. Have a great day. Bye-bye.